and we're going to get into this whole connection of peripheral neuropathy. Thought for people that have peripheral neuropathy, would want to hear um, what uh, Roberto had told me, and that you have had for seven operations. Seven operations on your legs. Four, four on, uh, on my left leg and three on my right leg. I got you. I used to be a mail carrier, mm -hmm. and every time I would go upstairs, mm -hmm. I'd start getting uh, pains okay. in my legs. And the major reason that you came into our office was. The pains, the pains on my legs and then my back. Okay, all right. So it was really hard for you to walk too. I know that was something that you wanted to do. And yes, now that I'm, I've been coming with uh, Dr. Valentine, I feel better. I can walk better, and I don't feel the pain like I used to. Okay. When you first came in, how far could you walk? Uh, before I, I could only walk probably about a uh, half a mile. Okay. And when I started, I would uh, start like uh, 10 minutes, and then I would have to take a rest. Then after that, I would feel better. But now I, I could usually go straight without uh, resting for about uh, 45 minutes. Oh, great. Yeah, you know, we have peripheral neuropathy here, but we have all the signs and symptoms that are missed, like plantar fasciitis. Right, diabetes, or we're going to say sugar handling problems, because you don't have to be a diabetic to have peripheral neuropathy. You can have sugar handling problems. That means you can be, and it's going to display as all kinds of different. Autoimmune, that's it, yeah. Yes. This is autoimmune disorders, okay? So we all inflammation. So when we look at this, it's really an inflammatory response by the body that's out of control. Because we can even look at the liver, and we can look at what? Statin drugs, right? High cholesterol. Is anyone on statin drugs? Yeah, I'm on Lipitor. Yeah, you're on Lipitor. And your doctor... So what also happens in this type of scenario is we start to get vertigo, and you can also have, like, gut problems whether it be ulcerative colitis, whether it be Crohn's, also it can be thyroid disorders. Anyone here have problems falling asleep or staying asleep? I'm here to tell you, you can get better, okay? The neat process. We need to look at all the different realms and all the different players in the peripheral neuropathy. Induced, okay, chemo-induced <coughs> peripheral neuropathy, alcohol-induced peripheral neuropathy, oh, yeah. statin drugs. But see, it's not that it's causing it. The body's already set up in a situation where it's not functioning well. And it's kind of like that teeter-totter. All it needs is that just a little extra push to go over the edge. But it's a cascade of events, so someone that has high blood pressure is eventually going to have diabetes, right. blood sugar problems, and vice versa. Someone that has diabetes or blood sugar problems is eventually going to have high blood pressure problems. Because what does it mean? It means that things are spreading to multiple glands and organs. What are they basically doing? What's a body basically doing? It's failing. It's not able to heal itself. That's what's going We're on. We're here with June today, and June, give us a little idea. You've had back surgeries. How many back surgeries have you had? I've had five. The last one was laser. Mm -hmm. and you've had a la you've had a laminectomy. Yes, that was my first one. Okay, and then you had a fusion with plates and with the plates and yes. screws. And the thing that you had been suffering with prior to coming in was my back always, mm -hmm. but my hip also. Okay. I must say the treatments have helped considerably. Beautiful. Now you we were talking about the strength in your leg, like the pain and the strength in the leg. It was difficult for you to go... What? I could not walk up a step Couldn't. without holding on to the railing. Wow. And uh, I just couldn't put any weight on that side at all. Good. And now how is that now going Oh, it's up? much better. Great. I can walk up that step without touching the railing. Beautiful, fantastic. Um, now laying on your side, you did talk that to you, that was a problem if you would lay on the side, it would wake you up about how many times oh, a night? Several times several a times night. Several times a night. Yeah. And that's improved as well as far as ability? 
it has it's gotten better just the last couple of weeks great and so, you know a lot of people think uh, out there you know that are older they don't realize that this kind of care exists what would you say as far as to those individuals that might be on the fence not knowing whether oh, to do this i would definitely try try this again what they're trying to do is say okay try this and see how this does but that is dealing with symptoms. Is it going to fix anything? What do you think? What do you think? No, absolutely not. You got to get to the cause of the problem of this peripheral neuropathy. So we're here with Robert Young today. And Robert, uh, you were diagnosed with peripheral neuropathy. Uh, what age? 35. 35. Yep. And what, what were you noticing symptom-wise back then? Felt like tingling in my feet, pain in my feet. The ends of my toes started to go, kind of numb feeling. Okay. Um, so I went to see a doctor, thought it might be diabetes or something like that. So they tested me for diabetes, they tested me for low vitamin D. Um, I think that's about it until they told me to go to a neurologist. And so the neurologist did the... Did an EMG test, did a nerve conduction test, and basically after those tests were done, he just said, well, you have peripheral neuropathy kind of kicked me out the door and, and said there's not much we can do. I said, what about the pain? He said he could medicate me with Neurontin or whatever, you know, that was available and I didn't want medication. So basically for the last eight years I've been suffering with pain and my feet going more and more numb. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't what? Was it affecting your sleep? Was it affecting your activity? Affecting How was it affecting you? Big time. Usually around 9 p.m. or so, my feet would start to tingle real bad and get real real irritated feeling almost like they were falling asleep but mm -hmm. with pain associated with that and then I'd, I'd go to sleep and when, every time I pull the covers up it'd make my feet go even more crazy so it, sleeping was hard. How is it now you're sleeping? Now? Sleeping was off. Was how's, awesome. the, how's the pain? Pain went from probably a 8 to a 10 sometimes down to like a 3. 10 being the highest. Yeah. Okay, now you're at a level three? Yeah, about a three. Great. You're Which sleeping, great. you sleep through the sleeping night? Sleeping like a baby, yeah. Great. Yep. Okay, because we found other problems associated with this that a lot of people don't understand out there as far as with the peripheral neuropathy, like your blood sugar, you know, and, right. and that right. was a huge issue with right. you. Low blood sugar. Real low, hypoglycemic. Yep. Right, and now that blood sugar is? Stable. I mean, stable. I'm, I'm running probably mid 80s to mid 90s most of the time beautiful where i'd wake up in the morning i'd be 62 or even wow. lower sometimes and for the people that don't know that normal is 85 to 99 and that's fasting that's what we yeah. call the healthy range yeah great great so if you were to talk to other people or other people out there that are kind of on the fence not understanding peripheral neuropathy they, you know they try other things and other people, of course, have been on the Topamax or the Neurontin. Neurontin is the most popular. Right. And then eventually they go on to like Cymbalta or they go on to Lyrica or Lidocaine patches, you know, for the pain. Right. What would you say to those individuals, you know, that are looking into what we do now? I'd tell them, come here in a minute because it's, it's really saved me. It's, it's saved um, a lot of headaches at night and lots of pain. I. I I can't express how much it's it's been a help for me. Great. It's Thank been huge. Beautiful. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. And you were diagnosed with? Uh, neuropathy in my feet. How long had you been suffering with the peripheral neuropathy? Probably a good eight years. Wow. Okay. And your hands as well, the numbness. The numbness and tingling, yes. And tingling. And that was interfering with your ability to do what? Oh, like put my makeup on, do my hair, just dry it. You know, just hold the hair dryer and the brush. Um, your hands writing, were falling Writing. Writing also. Oh, okay. You know, just fall asleep. I was constantly mm -hmm. shaking them. How is the hands as far as the numbness, tingling? I've noticed the tingling and the numbness I haven't had in the past few days. So yeah. your sleeping wasn't great. Right, no, plus tossing and turning. Plus All tossing night. and turning. Yeah. So now, you said the last few nights, what have you noticed? I've been sleeping straight through. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm 